I need to make an announcement before we get started. The, uh, you can go down to the snack room right down the hall and watch us on the internet. I don't think we've had this many people at a meeting uh, ever that I can, I can recall. Uh, and I know you just want to hear about the consent agenda, so uh, <laughs> welcome. Um, Randy Luby, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the July 29, 2019 meeting of the Shawnee uh, County Board of Commissioners. My name is Bob Archer. I currently serve as chair of the commission and represent District 3 alongside Commissioner Bill Ripon, who represents District 1, and Commissioner Kevin Cook, who represents District 2. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. First item of business, please. Number one, proclamations, presentations, presentation on Momentum 2022. <laughs> well, good morning, commissioners. I'm Keith Ward. I'm one of the tri chairs for Momentum 2022, and, and I want to give kudos to Commissioner Cook, the other tri chair, one of the other tri chairs, Mayor De La Isla, the, the third tri chair. Kayla and I are here today to give you an update on Momentum 2022. Um, so we're 19 months into a 60 month implementation plan. And at the beginning of this year, we, we stepped back and looked a little bit at the implementation where we are right now. And, and we spent a lot of time, we used some of the resources at Bloomberg Harvard, and we came up with three areas that we thought we needed to refocus in on, zero in on to make the implementation even better. Uh, so we used the resources of of Bloomberg and Harvard and uh, spent a lot of time thinking about implementation and, and zeroed in on these three areas. First of all is the public value statement. Uh, we've, we felt like Momentum 2022, as broad as it is, many people within our community just were, were focusing in on downtown re redevelopment or workforce development or one aspect of it. We needed to create a public value statement that, that really resonated with everybody and so we've we zeroed in on a, a value statement that uh, talked about access to opportunity talked about increasing our health hope happiness and prosperity those types of things everybody in our community can relate to uh, certainly we also looked at organizational changes we thought through our first year of implementation that we could have done a better job with decision making and so we created some clear bylaws which relate to responsibilities and roles for everybody involved with Momentum 2022. Those bylaws were passed and accepted by the Implementation Committee in May. And then finally, we started to look at our communication program and who we're communicating with, uh, how frequently we're com communicating with, um, and what the message is. We created a speakers bureau now uh, we're training speakers to talk with different organizations within our community. We've utilized the resources of Bloomberg Harvard again this past summer to uh, access one of their graduate students who has been focused in on helping us create our communication program. Uh, and we think we've made steps in that direction also. So I'm going to turn it over to Kayla and let her talk about where we are in the plan right now. Excellent. So this graphic is sort of the, the most concise version we have to say what is Momentum 2022, right? These are the, the main overall headings of the different things that we're working on within Momentum 2022. And our goal here is not to necessarily go over all of these objectives as far as what they are. We want to talk about what we're doing in each of these realms. 
So the first objective is develop homegrown talent. So some of the things that are currently happening in this sphere are Together Topeka. If you haven't heard of Together Topeka, it is a relatively new uh, collaborative community-wide effort around education and developing our youth. <coughs> Top City Interns is in its second successful year engaging interns that are interns with various organizations throughout the community uh, who we're working to engage and, and frankly hopefully retain here in our community. Collaborative data. So this is kind of a, an interesting side note of Together Topeka. So as we've brought together all of these partners around education and early childhood development, what we have realized is that there are numerous entities in our community that are purchasing the same or very similar data sets from the same sources. So we're bringing people together to have these conversations of, okay, what, what data set is it that we can all collectively use, save our community money, and put more money into developing the youth instead of purchasing the data? And for each one of the pillars that I'm going to talk about, um, we have a, a project management software that we utilize in-house. And that project management software tracks the completion of all of the objectives. Um, and so for each one of these, I, I've, I've sort of assessed an overall completion rate. And so the overall completion rate then for develop homegrown talent within the Momentum 2022 strategy is 61%. Moving on to the next pillar, so we have create vibrant and attractive places. Some of the objectives here are uh, team up to clean up. That's actually a, a city-led initiative that we've been able to partner with them. Uh, and really the focus there has been on uh, putting a lot of the effort into a particular neighborhood or a particular community uh, just to, to sort of accelerate the, the impact that's felt. Kind of a, a fun, exciting thing that's happening in this sphere is uh, Better Cities for Pets certification. So Topeka was recently certified as a Better City for Pets uh, under the, the Mars Pet Care Pets <laughs> program. And really what that does is, A, it gets us a lot of publicity for Mars as they push that out really across the country. Um, but it also allows us to, to market ourselves to, to pets and pet owners as a great place to visit and a great place to live. Also, downtown business and restaurant growth. And really throughout NOTO and our entire dynamic core, we've seen lots of, lots of businesses open and lots of restaurants open, and, and that's really been great. And then overall completion percentage for this particular sphere is 63.75%. All right, so the third initiative is grow a diverse economy. <coughs> so some of the things happening within this realm, Wheatfield Village, we're really excited to, to soon open Wheatfield Village as a, as a great economic development driver and, and really a, a quality of place initiative for our community. Go Topeka has gotten their AEDO certification, um, which is a, an economic development organization certification that uh, I believe Go Topeka is still the only one in the state that, that holds that, so we're pretty proud of that. Also, plug and play. Uh, we have been working with Plug and Play, which is an accelerator program. Uh, they specialize in connecting technology startups with the world's largest corporations. Um, they did things like help start Google. So they're, they're a really big deal. Uh, so we are, we're working with them uh, currently to determine if, if maybe Topeka is the next space that they want to enter. <coughs> and current completion rate on this is 59.75%. All right, so our, our fourth area is promote a positive image. So some of the items that, that you'll see here, again, as Keith mentioned, the Speakers Bureau, we're really excited about engaging a group of volunteers to, to be trained and armed to go out into the community and, and speak about what's going on in the community, uh, what's, what's forecasted to go on in the community, and, and how people can get involved and can help with that. I'd also like to ask you to save the date of September 5th uh, we will be hosting an event called The Turning Point from 5.30 to 8 p.m. Uh, Dr. Reuben West, who's a native Topekan and also an internationally renowned speaker, uh, will be coming to Topeka to facilitate a listening session and really talk with us about, about Topeka and, and help gather some, some feedback that will then be utilized to guide future action as well. Current completion in this sphere is 49 or 40 percent, excuse me. All right, and the final initiative is collaborate for a strong community. Some of the things happening here are um, our community pride has gone up, and, and that's been 
Uh, that was a really important part of Momentum 2022, I think for all of us from the beginning. Uh, and we actually measure that. We put numbers behind that, which was uh, interesting to kind of figure out how to do that. But we utilize a net promoter score uh, to measure that in our community. And basically, a net promoter score is a, a simple survey that asks folks one question. And that one question is always, how likely are you to recommend X? And in this case, X is living in Topeka and Shawnee County. <clears throat> And basically, the score is calculated by taking the, the people that scored the, the nines and the tens, those promoters, minus the detractors at the lower end of the scale, and it yields you a number. So our first number back in 2017 was 50, negative 50. And our new score in 2018 is negative 37. So it's actually gone up 13 points. Um, so we're, we're pretty excited about that as well. We have a new flag. We love our new flag, and we're excited to, to continue to promote that throughout the community. Uh, diversity on boards, events, and board training. We've held several events and really worked to engage specifically a more diverse audience in board training uh, because they really expressed that if, if they were going to uh, be more active in working to get board positions, that they'd really like to, like to have that training. So we've been working on that. Topeka Youth Commission. Uh, is up and running, and we're, we're very excited about that. We've been working with the youth to uh, engage in a variety of topics in the community. And then the current completion rate for this sphere is 82%. More information can be found at Momentum2022.com. <coughs> and I also, commissioners, I've also provided to you um, what is our Topeka and Shawnee County Vital Stats. Um, that's, that's sort of a mouthful, so we just sort of loosely refer to it as our scorecard. But this provides the specific numbers and the specific metrics that we track which w within each one of the spheres of Momentum 2022. Um, I invite you to, to take a look at this and, and let me know if you have any questions. We've touched on just a couple of these today, but um, like I said, I'd be happy to, happy to dive in. And there's also more up here in this chair if somebody would like to uh, pass those out or we can pass those out at the conclusion. Very good. Are there questions for Keith or Okay. No. Mm -hmm. No. No. I okay. greatly appreciate my, the ability to serve as a tri chair and work on improving the health of our community. Thank and you. We certainly, we certainly appreciate Commissioner Cook's service on that, that committee. Um, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. This thank you. Appreciate it. Next item, please. Item three, consent agenda. Twelve items on the consent agenda. Are there any questions or concerns? I would move for approval as presented. Second. <laughs> Motion made to approve the consent agenda by Commissioner Cook, seconded by Commissioner Ripon. All in favor say aye, opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item four, new business. A, county clerk, number one, consider all voucher payments. Environmental and Process Systems, Inc., $24,700 is for submersible propeller uh, pump and controls for uh, Adventure Cove, Hendrick Screen Company, $30,524 is for water intake screen for Adventure Cove. As of July 26, 2019, total vouchers, $1,789,779.56. And I move that we approve the vouchers. Second. Motion made to approve the vouchers by Commissioner Ripon. That was seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Oppose no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Number two, consider correction orders. I'll move to approve. Second. Motion made to approve the correction orders by Commissioner Archer. Seconded by Commissioner Ripon. All in favor say aye. Oppose no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item B, Health Department, number one, consider <coughs> authorization and execution of contract C-263-2019, budget revisions to the Kansas Department of Health and Environment aid to local grant application for state fiscal year 2020. Good morning, Commissioners. Linda Oaks from the Health Department. I do have a few slides, and I think they're right here. Yes. Okay, this is our... Um, annual aid to local from Kansas Department of Health and Environment. We submitted our request a few months ago and brought that forward and this is the final grant that they will be giving us for these programs. 
So we requested about 1.2 million and were awarded 993,000. I will say that's about a sixth of our budget. So that's quite, <coughs> it's quite a grant for us. Um, <clears throat> we tend to ask for everything when we do these grants. And so we don't always get everything. Um, it, we got about 83% of what we requested. Um, the one that was really low, family planning, we got half of what we requested. And honestly, it's our first year with this grant. And so we were just guessing, honestly. That's what we, uh, Riley County helped us a little bit, but it was just, we just threw out what we thought. And we have reworked that budget and we still think we can do the program with that budget. And then this is the comparison from last year to this year. And you can see it's very close to last year. Um, our biggest decrease is in the uh, public health emergency preparedness. We lost $11,871. They had a decrease from the feds is what um, was explained to us. So um, it's tight, but we can still do that program this year. We're going to have to really watch that program. The rest of them were very close uh, to what we had last year. And of course, family planning is new. And then this is a comparison of what has, it has looked like over the last few years. And I uh, talked about this in our budget hearing, too. Um, this grant continues to go down, so we get concerned about that. But we are watching it and watching these programs and looking for ways to try to get more revenue into the programs. So um, just a few highlights of what we asked for in this, um, in this grant this year. Mostly it's a few new positions that we asked for. Um, the first one would be a maternal child health registered nurse. We've had this position budgeted for several years, but because of the way Kansas Department of Health and Environment changed our indirect payments, um, we need to fill this this year in order to get the full grant amount. And we do need the person too. I'm not just doing it to get the grant. Um, <clears throat> baby basic class has been a huge success. We've had a lot of people go through that class and we want to expand it. We want to have more locations around town. We want to have more time choices. We'd also like to have a Spanish class. Um, so the script training is for tobacco cessation. We'd like to continue to do more work with that. The more people we can get to quit smoking uh, while they're pregnant, the better. Um, and also just those additional outreach opportunities with the library, with the Children's Palace. We need people to do those things. And so I think this would be a great opportunity to expand the work we're doing um, in early childhood. Then health, prom <coughs> excuse me, health promotion specialists, this is in the chronic disease risk reduction grant. Um, this is another area where uh, we are just exploding with work. We have, um, we're starting the Farm and Food Advisory Council. We've done a lot of work with tobacco, um, with uh, all kinds of different activities in, um, <clears throat> excuse me, chronic disease reduction. And I think this is, this is where it's at for public health. It's that outreach piece. It's getting the community. Um, all these great pickleball players know about exercise and how good that is. And they're working on those chronic diseases, so we want to do that too. So we need another person to help us with this work. And then for family planning, since we are starting it again, we did it several years ago. and. Um, we are, we are going to need a mid-level practitioner to do the family planning. And again, I like to show this chart that shows that we did a good survey and that there is a need for this service. There is a desire for the service in our community. There are types and options in family planning. They're not available readily to women without health insurance. So we want to be able to do that. So that is it for the aid to local. I always like to show this group of great looking people. This is our staff. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions about the Aid to Local grant. Are there questions for <coughs> Linda today? No questions. Today. Um, then it, oh, go ahead. No, after you, sir. I was <laughs> just going to say I would move to authorize the execution of the contract uh, for the 2019, uh, 20, I guess 2020 fiscal year. 2020 fiscal year. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Motion made to approve the contract by Commissioner Cook, seconded by Commissioner Rippon. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank Next item, please. Item C, <coughs> corrections. Number one, consider approval of request of fiscal year 2019 fourth quarter budget adjustment reports for adult and juvenile community corrections budgets. Wow. 
Good morning, Commissioners. Brian Cole, Shawnee County Department of Corrections. This is just a uh, quarterly approval that uh, you've done in the past for the uh, community corrections uh, uh, adjustment forms that go to the, the Kansas Department of Corrections uh, for uh, our community corrections. Again, this was uh, adjustments that were done prior to us taking over the administration, mm -hmm. but uh, this does need your approval so we can get it back to uh, the Kansas Department of Corrections. I do have Deputy Director Tim Phelps here if there's any specific questions you'd like answered. Thank you. No questions. I I'll move to approve. Second. Motion made to approve by Commissioner Archer, seconded by Commissioner Ripon. All in favor say aye. Oppose no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Thank you, Brian. Next Thank item, you very please. much. Item D, Parks and Recreation, number one, consider approval of request to solicit bids <clears throat> for proposals to repair the Shawnee North Family Aquatic Center waiting pool due to a leak. Good morning, Commissioners. Tim Laurent, Shawnee County Parks and Recreation Department. So uh, in 2018, staff noticed a pretty significant leak at the uh, baby pool at Shawnee North. Uh, we had to shut the pool down last year. It's been shut down this year, that, just that section. So we're asking to go out for an RFP to uh, actually have somebody come in, do some ex excavation work, find out what this is going to cost to repair. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions, Commissioner Cook? Didn't our original estimates come in at over $500,000? They did, uh, yes. Okay. Yes. And so we're doing this work now just to really determine how bad it's going to be. Yes. Uh, I think we won't know for sure what that price is until they actually do some excavation work and see what we're dealing with. There are some, some uh, uh, plumbing issues between the baby pool and the bathhouse that I think will have to be resolved as well. but. Yes, uh, you're, I, I think 500000 600000 is probably what you're looking at if we decide to replace it in its current form. And the replacement of the baby pool at the Shawnee North facility, this is part of our capital improvement for 2020? I believe it is. And so when we talk about the money for capital improvement, this is one of the items that would be contemplated um, being used? Absolutely. All right. Nothing else? Questions? No questions. Motion? Move for approval of the request to solicit bids. I second that. Motion to approve by Commissioner Cook, seconded by Commissioner Ripon. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Number two, consider approval of resolution number 2019-51, authorizing the allocation of $605,885 in remaining bonds for the repairs and improvements to Lake Shawnee Trails and other Shawnee County Parks and Recreation facilities. Good morning, Commissioners. Tim Laurent, Shawnee County Parks and Recreation. We are asking to use $200,000 of, of this bond money to uh, make repairs to the uh, trail that runs along 45th Street by Lake Shawnee between East Edge and West Edge. We're working with uh, our friends in Public Works to make that happen. Uh, we're asking that the remainder of the funds be moved or uh, reallocated for uh, just general repairs in our maintenance fund. Be happy to answer any questions you might have. Questions? Yes, Commissioner Cook. This might be a better question for Betty to talk about where this money has come from and why we're using this, uh, because this is borrowed money from past years. Yes, this is money that we're mainly, your approval will repurpose the money. Um, it was listed in specific um, items under the, the bond, and so this is just the formality of repurposing this money so that it can be used for other items which is you know including the the trails and then other facilities and there's not going to be an issue with rechanging the purpose from borrowed money from 2006 to now we're using it in 2019 and on no we're worked we've worked with um bob perry our bond counsel and he is the one that actually worked with us on on this resolution so that we make sure that we dot all of our I's and cross all of our T's to make sure that this is uh, what needs to be done. And then maybe a question for Tim if I could ask. Uh, where we're planning on having the $405,885 go? It just says other improvements, but what other improvements are we contemplating? Um, I think one possible use for those funds would be to put towards the cost of the uh, repairing the 
the baby pool at Shawnee North. Okay. So yep. the prior item that we just discussed with <clears throat> this 405000 would almost cover most of what we're looking at, the estimated cost. Correct. Very good point. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, any other? Uh, so how much would, would go to trail replacement? Here, the, in, in what we're proposing would just be that $200,000, which would go to, to, to replace that section right there on 45th Street. Uh, just to kind of to uh, expand on that, uh, as part of their road project, they have been work public works worked with Parks and Rec that <clears throat> part of their road project will uh, in Compass or yes. include, I guess you'd say, that section of that trail that is so steep and that will take care of that. So, what we plan to do on that is uh, 200000 from this money that we're repurposing would be transferred to that road project and would be um, to cover the costs of the additional costs for, do, you know, for that part of this road project. That covered my second question. So. <laughs> That's the way Betty operates. She's always a step ahead. <laughs> Commissioner Archer, just yes, Commissioner Cook. When we talk about the trail, just to make sure it's perfectly clear for the public record, this is on 45th Street at Lake Shawnee, where years ago we had a tragic bicycle accident, okay. and the county has put up signs indicating that you are not to ride your bicycle, you're to walk your bicycle, and this pulls it out onto 45th Street so that it would be on a level surface yep. and not the steep incline. Just Correct. to make sure we're perfectly clear on what yeah, we're talking you, about. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Cook, for the clarification. I'll move to adopt the resolution. I'll second that. Motion made to approve by Commissioner Archer, seconded by Commissioner Ripon. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no motion carries. Three to zero. Next item, please. Thank you. Number three, consider authorization and execution of contract <clears throat> C-264-2019, an amendment to contract C-134-2013 with the Greater Topeka Rowing Development Association to utilize facility in Shawnee Lake until June 30th, 2020. Good morning, Commissioner. Sean Osborne, Parks and Recreation. The item before you is just an amendment to the contract that we have existing. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have with that. Questions? I'll move for approval. <coughs> Second. Motion made to approve. Authorization and execution of contract C-265-2019, amendment number two to contract C-84-2018 with the Topeka Premier Umpire Association, LLC, amending Appendix A specifying new <coughs> sports and officials. Good morning again, Commissioner Sean Osborne, Parks and Recreation. The item before you is basically just make an amendment to Section A of the contract, which is just allowing us to have adult kickball and have referees um, and so we can pay them and also the youth uh, three on three basketball. Just just basically adding these to help the clerk when we pay. Questions? Motion? I'll move to approve. Second. Motion made to approve by Commissioner Ripon, seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Oppose, no motion carries. Three to zero. Next item, Thank please. You. Number five. <clears throat> Consider approval of a request for a project budget of $95,168.91 for Forbes Golf Course Pro Shop Improvements with funding from the Building Maintenance Fund. Morning, Commissioners. Jeremy Myers, Shawnee County Parks and Recreation. Uh, item before you is for approval for up to $95,000. Um, <coughs> to uh, improve, make, make improvements to uh, the Forbes Golf Course Clubhouse. I got some pictures here from Friday that are updated from the ones that were in your packet, but as you can see, the siding is uh, very hmm. well weathered and deteriorating. Um, the the uh, <coughs> gutter system is really need uh, some tender, loving care because of the water is flowing right back into the clubhouse and making a lot of damages. So. Just showing some of these pictures. Some of the gutter spouts don't even, they just drop right straight down. Windows need to be replaced. Some of them just covered over um, and not even um, being used anymore. So um, some of these pictures are uh, um, concerning to me. So what we are um, proposing is going to get some siding, some uh, gutter systems, and some windows replaced. Possible looking into some roof if we have some money left over. but. Um, we are just looking for requests to go out for bid. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Questions? 
How many rounds of golf are we experiencing? Out 2018, there? there's around 12,000 um, rounds of golf. Um, I think we're um, on a target or above um, for moving this year as well. And we got plans for more events and more um, programs down there as well for next year. Commissioner Archer. Yes, Commissioner Cook. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> the uh, building maintenance fund, we had designated that golf was to be self sustaining. Um, is this building maintenance fund, is this coming from the user fees or is this coming from the general fund? This would be general fund for Forbes, not Lake Shawnee and uh, um, Cypress, which would be um, <laughs> self sustaining. <laughs> So, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, Betty Griner again, um, Director of Administrative <coughs> Services. The uh, two 18-hole golf courses are in the self-sustaining fund. The Forbes is not. That is federal land, so um, that does not. And, and the the proceeds from those federal lands do not go into the general fund. By our agreement with federal government, those have to go into a separate fund, and they go into this building maintenance fund. All right. Thank, Thank you. you buddy. I'll move for the approval of the request for a project budget of $95,168.91. I'll second. Motion made to approve by Commissioner Cook, seconded by Commissioner Ripon. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Uh, motion carries three to zero. Thank, Thank you, you, Jeremy. Next item, please. <clears throat> item E, Public Works, number one, consider approval of request to fill one vacant road maintenance position <clears throat> at an annual salary including benefits of $44,009.67 and any subsequent, subsequent position that may become vacant from filling this position. Good morning, Commissioners. Kurt Niehouse, Director of Public Works and Solid Waste. Yes, we have another uh, vacancy, another road maintenance position that's uh, vacant. We would like to fill it. Uh, as the um, agenda item stated, uh, the annual salary, including fringe benefits, would be a smidgen over 44000 And with that, I'll take your questions. I'll move to approve. Second. Motion made to approve by Commissioner Archer. Seconded by Commissioner Ripon. All in favor say aye. Oppose no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank you, Kurt. Thank Next you. item, please. Item F, Information Technology, <clears throat> number one, consider authorization and execution of contract C-266-2019, a 60-month agreement with Cox Communication for a new network connection between the North Community Center and the Shawnee County Courthouse at a cost of $305 per month to the Public Works Department and $305 per month to the Parks and Recreation Department with an installation fee of $400 paid by the Information Technology Department. Good morning, Commissioners. Pat O'Blander with the Information Technology Department. As mentioned, uh, this is uh, an agreement for a circuit out at the uh, North Community Center. The North Community Center is actually a complex of buildings that includes the uh, community center itself and some buildings uh, from the Public Works Department and Solid Waste Department. The Household Hazardous Waste Facility is out there, Sign Shop, uh, the Public Workshop. A variety of buildings are out there. Currently, those buildings and the North Community Center are all supported by a pretty slow speed T1 line that runs at about 1.5 megabits per second. And additionally, there are about 11 phone lines that are in use out there. And as mentioned, the uh, costs for those are uh, relatively expensive for the speeds that we're getting. So we have uh, sought uh, some quotes from a variety of providers, and Cox has provided us with a circuit that would provide 5 megabits per second for that complex, which would be a five times increase over what we've currently got at a reduced cost of about $610 per month. Uh, the amount that's being spent for uh, those circuits by uh, Public Works and um, the uh, Parks and Rec Department are significantly higher. We'll be able to reduce those rates to about $305 per month per entity and increase the circuit speed. So uh, with your permission, we'd like to engage with Cox Communications for a 60-month term circuit. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Questions, anyone? I move to approve. Second. Motion made to approve the contract by Commissioner Ripon, seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Thank you, Pat. Thank Next you, item. Commissioners. IMG Sheriff's Office, number one, consider approval of request to create and fill a quality assurance and development manager in the communications division at an hourly pay of $19.69, classified non-exempt. Commissioners, I believe the Sheriff's Office would like that pulled. Okay. Move to pull that item. Second. 
Motion made to pull the item by Commissioner Cook, seconded by Commissioner Ripon. All in favor say aye. Oppose no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item H, Administrative <coughs> Services, discussion, discussion of CIP. Good morning, Betty Greiner, Director of Administrative Services. As part of our uh, discussion for our capital improvement plan, I was asked if our bond council could come and speak with us about our bond rating and reserves and those types of things. So I'd like to introduce Robert uh, Perry, who is our current bond council. <coughs> you guys really are going to get bored with this, okay? <laughs> Uh, my name is Bob Perry. I'm bond counsel for the county. Kevin asked Betty to give me a call last week and kind of explain why the county maintains unencumbered uh, reserves, uh, basically cash uh, reserves, and how that would affect our rating. And our rating can affect how much interest costs the county over the years. In 2000, so what I've done is I went and pulled out four ratings over the last decade. Uh, in 2011, which was a couple of years <coughs> after the recession, we were put on a credit watch. And that means that uh, if the circumstances of the county's financial situation didn't improve, they were going to downgrade the rating from an AA2 probably to an AA3. Uh, one of the factors that was very instrumental in that negative watch was, quote, the rating reflects the county's strong fiscal management, healthy reserves, <coughs> liquidity, oh, that's the wrong date, I'm sorry. From 2011, it states the negative outlook reflects the expectation that general fund reserves levels will continue to decline, which are inconsistent with an AA2 rating. So in essence, what had happened in 10 and 11 and nine is in lieu of having a property tax increase, the commission at that time, which were not these three gentlemen, decided to take cash out of the reserves <clears throat> and reduce the cash reserves, which put us on a negative credit watch. In 2013, they removed the negative credit watch. The factors that they listed as the strengths for the removal of the negative credit watch was institutional stability provided by the county of the seat of Topeka and the state of Kansas capital recent surpluses rebuilding reserve levels. In 2017, they upgraded our uh, rating to an AA1, which was a very strong institutional rating, which allows us to borrow money at pretty decent rates compared to other counties that have less of a rating. And the strengths that they listed is this trend of operating <clears throat> fund surpluses resulted in significantly improved reserved levels. Uh, in the 40 years I've been doing this, I've never gotten a direct answer from any analyst with Moody's Standard & Poor's or Fitch's about an amount of reserve levels that they prefer to see. But there seems to be a consensus that 20% or more is what they prefer to see in order to maintain an AA2 or an AA1 rating level. And that AA1 uptick in 17 is still in existence today, and it's also applicable to the public building commission that the county created in order to do the financing at the Expo Center. Very good. Questions for Mr. Perry? Bob, one of the reasons why I've asked you to come is we will often get asked, or I often get asked in the public, <laughs> Why do you hold as much money in reserves as you do? Um, you have you know, over $30 million that's just sitting there. And what I explain to people is I try to equate it to my own home finances, where I look at how much money I have in savings. And if I go to the bank to borrow money, they're going to look at my credit worthiness and see uh, what my interest rates might be or how much they're willing to lend us. Is that accurate to put that onto Shawnee County and that the bond companies are also looking at how much money we have in reserves to determine what our credit worthiness should be. Um, they, they factor in the reserves as far as for the credit worthiness. They also factor in the reserves as well as the economics and the demographics of, the, of this county or any county is, is what do you have to fall back on when a catastrophe happens? You know, 
uh, Greenberg was in existence one day and the next day it wasn't. Joplin was in existence one day and the next day it wasn't. Uh, you know, I, I don't remember the particulars with Greenberg, but I do remember that they took a substantial assistance from the state of Kansas uh, in order just to make their operational costs because they had very little reserves. You know, if a tornado rollers down one or make a boulevard and takes, you know, $300 million of assessed value off the tax rolls, if we don't have a, some sort of reserves in order for operations while we recoup that loss from all of the other sources that are available, that can uh, impact not only how you provide services, but how much money it's going to cost you to borrow money. In just the short time from 2012, 2013 to 2019, we've seen very significant increases in Shawnee County's credit worthiness and bond rating. Our ratings in the last five years have consistently re not only reflected the increase in the reserves, but they've also consistently stated that this commission and the staff in the county have done a good job of financial responsibility. And you got to remember, this is one county out of 105 in the state. It's one county of thousands in the United States that Moody's and Standard and Poor and Fitch look at. And so they don't have any hardcore tests, which you can go to each of those rating companies' websites and pull up the criteria they look at. And every criteria is financial management, reserves, the burden of debt, and the number of service type entities that produce money from sources other than tax dollars. Where does Shawnee County rank as compared to the state of Kansas or the city of Topeka? Do we rank above them, at them, or below them? Uh, the city is AA3, is my memory. And we're at a AA? We're, we're an AA1, which is better. Okay. Uh, and the state, from my memory, is an AA2 with a stable outlook. Uh, and that we used to be AA2. Johnson County is the only county in the state of Kansas that I can think of off the top of my head that has a AAA rating without having its debt insured. Hmm. Um, we're one of the highest. We're also what the third largest. So but comparatively speaking with our neighbors, the city and the state, we're doing better than they are in our ratings. I would look at it from a different perspective, Kevin, and I would look at it as compared to most of the counties in the state of Kansas, our ability to borrow money is as good, if not better, that is we're paying less interest costs. And I think the best example of that is, is we issued bonds last, at the beginning of the month, when we closed the deal, to refund some prior, through prior issues. We needed $12,055,000 to refund that principal and get it prepaid on September 1. And because of the ability, of, because of our rating and our debt payment history and the strength of the economy here, we received a 12% premium when we sold $10 million worth of bonds. In essence, we sold $10,965,000 of bonds. We needed $12,055,000 to pay it off. They paid us 12%. They paid us a million three in order to get a rate that they wanted to put on their books. So we didn't have to borrow the full amount in order to pay off the old debt and save money. We generated, what, 500 and, what was that, Betty? Five, $570,000 in savings. Now, next year we have a significant amount of uh, debt that's coming off of our books um, that's going to lower what our, our debt payment is. is. And is that <coughs> what you would see for that forecast if we did not take out any debt right now? Is, or is that something you look at? Well, it's something that the rating agencies look at. They look at your, they, you know, the, one of the criteria that they look at, how much debt is on the books, how much debt do you anticipate putting on the books, how much debt is coming off the books, and then what's the cost of the debt? Because it's, you know, the principal is one thing, but if you have a long bond out there and you're paying 6.5% on it as opposed to a market that might be four, they'll take that into fact. Thank you. Sure. Good question. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank Bob. you. Make a public comment. <clears throat> Have them come now. Is that okay with everybody else? Uh, yes, I would agree, Commissioner. But, but I think it's important to note that we're not making a final decision. Oh, today. no, no, we're not. And we'll talk about okay. that. Uh, I agree. Um, so we will take public comment, but uh, I have a question. <laughs> Who here is in support of expanding pickleball opportunities 
in Shawnee County, raise your hand. <laughs> All right. I want to just get the juices flowing a little bit. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, if anyone would like to address the commission, please step up. Well, thank you for letting me uh, visit with you for a minute about my passion, which is pickleball. Hi, my name's Eldonic Coates, and I have been involved with sports for all my life. I've been, played volleyball, softball, ping pong, and about 12 years ago, I was introduced to this game called pickleball, but little did I know it would change my life. Um, I am here speaking today as a long time Shawnee County residents. I also play pickleball many times a week in Shawnee County, but I am also an ambassador for the USAPA, which is the United States of America Pickleball Association, um, which I am an, an ambassador, and the USAPA is a national governing body of pickleball. Three of us um, are going to speak today. Um, we have been chosen, um, myself, Bob Gay, and Cole Dister, um, by a large amount of the pickleball community to express our views on the pickleball court and um, courts being um, developed and um, to let you know that we are in full support of the new courts at 21st and Urish. I was going to have everybody stand that was here in favor of, <laughs> of the courts, but you had them raise their hand. I think you can see that, that we do have quite a few um, around the corner and maybe in the break room. And, and as you can see, it's just not my passion. It is many people's passion. This is my story, but everyone here has their own story. Uh, to me, it's a family affair. Um, I met my husband playing pickleball. My mother learned to play pickleball at age 81. She still plays at age 87. I'm teaching my grandchildren how to play pickleball and their um, young ages for that. So it certainly is a multi-generational sport. Um, and I play at least five times a week, more if my body would allow me to. <laughs> Um, but here's a little background about pickleball in Topeka. We started with a group of uh, 12 or so when I started playing about um, a dozen years ago, and we played at French Middle School, and we chalked out the lines each week with sidewalk chalk, and then it would rain and wash the lines away, and we could only play what, once a week, and that's what we did. Eventually, we got Hughes Courts, which then pickleball in Shawnee County and Topeka exploded. Um, as a volunteer ambassador, I um, collect contact information, emails from pickleball players who are interested in receiving more information. Um, we started with a, a handful of people. In 2015, I have 400 people on that list. Today, there are over 650 people that I send out information about pickleball opportunities to in Shawnee County, such as we have picnics, round robins, um, drills and skills, beginner lessons, um, and tournaments, so we can keep informed and the people can come and play um, pickleball here in Shawnee County. If I were sitting in your position, I would want to know, if I built new courts at 21st and Urish, will they be used? And I can assure you, yes, they will be used. And this is six reasons why I believe that they will be used. Every Wednesday, volunteers teach new people how to play pickleball. Then they can, we loan them our paddles, we loan them our balls. Then they can come back next week and more volunteers teach them to play with other new people who are also just beginning so that we can perpetuate the beginning of, of new people playing pickleball. It amazes me that even in 112 heat index that we had people come out to learn how to play pickleball. Number two, on several occasions special group interests will ask us to teach them pickleball. This happened last night. A group of volunteers taught a church group of around 20 people. 
Um, I volunteer my time to teach um, at a Blue Cross Blue Shield wellness program to introduce more people uh, to to pickleball. Also, I have on the calendar for next year um, a Girl Scout troop that wants to learn more about how to play pickleball. Number three, pickleball is being taught in the schools. So now we're having students that are wanting to play pickleball. So they're bringing their families and saying, hey, where can we play and how, how do we play? So we are getting that influx of younger generation. One addition, if we had lights, would also open up opportunities for the working um, people that cannot play after dark. Because especially when, when daylight savings happens, um, we still have nice weather, but it's dark and we do, so far we don't have glow in the dark balls. So that would be, <laughs> be, be nice, but um, so we're limited by the, the daylight hours, um, even when it, we do have good weather. Pickleball is growing, um, number five, pickleball is growing on a national level. Uh, Cole's going to speak on some of those numbers in a minute, but I just want to say as we speak today at 8.30 today, pickleball is going to be on national TV, the um, morning show with uh, pros discussing pickleball. One of the pros is actually from um, a good friend of mine from, from Wichita, Kansas, that's going to be talking on national TV, so that exposure is there. And number six, the most important reason why pickleball grows is because friend telling friend. Um, everyone here has friends. They tell them how much fun the game is, and then they bring, come back the next week and bring their, their friends. We, the community, the pickleball community, um, are excited for the new courts at 21st and Urish. Congratulations to you for seeing the need for new courts in, in Shawnee County, and it is truly a dream come true for all of us. Thank you. Now, well, now, now, I get applause like that all the time. <laughs> yeah. uh, I haven't heard it yet, but I know you do. <laughs> now you know why she is our ambassador. Yeah. Uh, they asked me to speak on Bob Gay from Mayetta. <laughs> uh, I'm 78 years old, and uh, I play pickleball every day, sometimes twice a day. So it's just part of my culture. Uh, I want to talk about just two subjects, and I promise I'll, I'll make it quick. <laughs> uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, economic benefits that we see that from, from getting the pickleball courts, and then what pickleball has meant to me. Um, my wife and I, we travel four or five times a week here, and then uh, quite, quite often. Now, the economic benefits from that for Topeka would be the gas that we use. We get in Topeka, we grocery shop, we eat out every day when we're in here. <laughs> and uh, there's a bunch of them here can verify that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's just become a family event, as Eldana said, and it, it really is. It's just a awesome thing to do and how much fun it is and people travel from uh, Mayette and Lawrence, Oskaloosa, Kansas City come up here to play all the time and in fact I'm working on Holton uh, putting something in Holton uh, just a small venue and the Boys and Girls Club on the Potawatomi Nation. Okay um, okay what pickleball has meant to me I was two years ago I was uh, uh, at the Nationals playing singles wow. and I kept having this uh, ache and so I was drinking 7-Up and I called my local doctor and said I'm having acid reflex. <laughs> well anyway I did bronze medal <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't die <laughs> and anyway we got back he said you, you know you haven't got acid reflex so they did some tests and whatever so uh, I had triple bypass um, four days later I was out of the hospital and four weeks after that I was playing so that's what working and pickleball has done for me you know so um, the growth I just got back from Albuquerque uh, there was 36 courts for the Nationals uh, unbelievable venue and we will have that as we build a complex or as you guys choose to so we're all supportive and very pleased anything else I'm missing Cole, you're up. I promise you it wouldn't be very long. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir.
All right. Thank you, commissioners, for letting me speak to you guys today. First off, uh, I want to thank the following um, folks behind me uh, for voting me as one of the three to speak on your guys' behalf. Uh, I appreciate hearing that, and I hope I don't let you down. Uh, my name is Cole Dister. I'm 23 years old. I speak a native. I've been playing pickleball now for the past seven years. I was chosen today to be one of the three speakers, and it's an honor. My story with pickleball began seven years ago when I was originally introduced to the sport and where I met Aldana. She took the time to teach me the game and to show me why she was passionate about the sport. I soon grew to share that same passion for pickleball and have enjoyed playing ever since. As my love of the sport grew, I knew I wanted to get more involved within the community. And I currently serve as the Saturday morning round robin tournament coordinator. His volunteer roles allowed me to meet many of the people that you see here behind me. Throughout the years, I've seen it grow uh, within Topeka and also nationally. Uh, to help shed some light on this statement, I'd like to share just a few facts. Currently, um, at the national level, there are 3.1 million players playing pickleball. Uh, that's up 12% from last year alone. As of 2019, there were currently 6,885 places to play pickleball on dedicated courts. This equates to roughly 21,000 courts that people can go play. In Topeka, there's only one location, and I ask why. Other Kansas towns, um, have started to invest in pickleball. I'm sure you guys are well aware Kansas City and Wichita have done that uh, by implementing a place uh, called Chicken and Pickle. It's a bar and restaurant centered around the sport. Um, this has allowed them to um, gain a lot of revenue within the city throughout food and hotel expenses um, from patrons. Um, and additionally, as Eldana mentioned, uh, it is nationally recognized on a media standpoint as well. Uh, the USAPA has carried out several online live streamed events. They've reached over one and a half million viewers. In addition to that, many sports broadcasters, such as ESPN and CBS, have signed long-term TV contracts in order to showcase this growing sport. So in conclusion, the folks here today from the Peak of Pickleball community and I fully support the idea of adding the course to the Southwest 21st and Year's location and believe it will provide many benefits to the community, to community which I hope we have laid out before you. Also, I fully believe that adding these courts would align with this Momentum 2022 plan that was spoken on today. So Mr. Archer, uh, Mr. Ripon, and Mr. Cook, uh, I trust your judgment as you move forward with your decisions on this topic today. I want to thank you for recognizing the need for additional pickleball courts within Topeka and for listening to all of us. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, for, well, come on up. Come on up. <laughs> Good morning, commissioners. It's a, really a pleasure to be here. My name's Carolyn Weinhold. I've lived in Topeka for 20 years. I've uh, played pickleball for 4.2 years. <laughs> and I just love it. I admit I'm addicted. And uh, I do pr uh, support wholly the proposed family park. I think it's a great idea. I hope you go forward with that. I did send you an email last week. Uh, I don't know if you've had time to read it, but I want to revise my request. <laughs> uh, in that email, I uh, suggested that uh, we include lighting, new restrooms, a water fountain, and resurfacing of the Hughes Park courts. Uh, I'd like to take off everything from that list except for the resurfacing. Resurfacing Hughes Park to me should be really priority uh, for a couple of reasons. One, those uh, courts do serve uh, the people that live in Central and East Topeka. And uh, some of them will not go to the west side for one reason or another. And I think we need to have uh, at least a couple of facilities that will serve all the pickleball players. And uh, we have 16 courts there, and some of them are uh, a safety issue. There are cracks that are getting wider all the time. And uh, to me, for safety and, uh, and maybe even to prevent a lawsuit, uh, Shawnee County needs to resurface those courts as soon as possible. It'd be best if you could do it in the next month before, <laughs> <laughs> before uh, we have our Kansas Senior Games at Hughes Park. And uh, that's well attended, and uh, I hope you give that really serious thought. 
and I want to thank you for your public service. I think you have a very challenging job. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Well, I, I'll give the other commissioners a chance to, to speak. Um, I looked at, at Hughes Park. It's in the middle of a neighborhood, and that's, that's part of the problem with putting lights up, uh, to be honest with you. I know the director of public, uh, or Parks and Rec is now looking at resurfacing uh, the courts there at Hughes, so that is in action. Um, but I strongly support, strongly support putting the pickleball courts in Family Park at 21st and Urish. Uh, the master plan said that we needed a multi-generational facility there, and I think pickleball fits in very well with, with that objective. And so I will, I'll be working hard to see if we can do it as soon as possible. Um, uh, we're we're going to get into some real details on the CIP that uh, may be boring to some people. <laughs> Besides us, so I, I hate for people to stand. Uh, and uh, I think you've made your point. I think we <laughs> I think we get the message. So let's take. Well, yes. actually, uh, Commissioner uh, Cook, I'm if, sorry. If we could, I think just so that the public in the pickleball community. Here's where the other two commissioners will keep our comments brief. Um, at least I think I can. Um, <laughs> to see, just so that the public knows where the commission as a whole stands in regards to the issue with pickleball and family park. Uh, Commissioner Ripon. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for not bringing your paddles. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I. I <laughs> that's okay. I remember when we worked on Hughes Park, it was over 30 years ago, and it was a tennis complex. And they were old asphalt tennis courts, and uh, they were all cracked up and in bad shape. And at that time, we, we converted that park into, uh, into Hughes Play for All Park. It was the first handicapped accessible park in the whole state of Kansas. Wow. And we, we salvaged uh, about three of the old tennis courts that were, that were made of concrete. They weren't asphalt. And then we added a couple of uh, uh, concrete courts. I, not in my wildest dream would I ever thought it would turn into a pickleball co <laughs> complex because it just didn't exist at that time. Uh, but that's a little bit of the history of the park. Uh, I too support pickleball and I think it'd be a great facility out at uh, 21st and Urish. And, uh, but uh, I had a question for you. If, if somebody wants to learn how to play pickleball, how would they go about that? Go to Hughes. <laughs> if, if you come to Hughes Park at 6 o'clock on Wednesday night, we have volunteers to teach you from 6 to 7. We'll loan you paddles and balls, and we teach anybody who shows up. Okay. And I'm going to add to that. Um, I play at 5 o'clock in the morning. And we teach also at the South Y. For anybody that wants to learn, so just get up. You can do it before you go to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. At Shepherd Center um, on Wednesday, First Baptist Church from one to three. We have four courts, and we'll teach you on one of the courts. And Mondays, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just ask us. This is right. the we will train you. Mondays from one to three. We don't train that day because there's only three cool. Okay, no squab no squabbling at commission meetings. I'm sorry. Thank you. But show up. Shepherd Center, you have to be over 55 at Shepherd Center. Oh, okay. Well, uh, giddy up. Anytime, anytime, we all have extra paddles. And if you want to learn it, you don't necessarily have to wait till Wednesday. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Commissioner Cook, did you have anything to add? Yes. Um, I, I do want to say publicly that I am not against pickleball. So I, I'm going to preface it with that first. I am not against pickleball. It is multi-generational. It does meet Momentum 2022. It does encourage activity in the community. It is a positive for us health-wise and activity-wise. 
But as a commissioner, we have a lot of different responsibilities and obligations that we have to look at. So over the past week, as we've been inundated and flooded with people emailing and calling for and against the uh, pickleball facility at 21st and Urish, I've been trying to think about how can I explain this in a way in which we might all be able to relate to. So I want to leave all of you with just a simple word problem for you to think about. Um, I want you to picture that you are the president of a bank. And a man named Sean has come into your bank. He earns $100,000 a year, but he has very limited disposable income because of his monthly expenses. Now, he has significant savings, but those are not available to him. He was recently told that his house needs $5,000 worth of repairs because of deferred maintenance. Now, Sean has come to your bank to borrow $10,000 to buy a summer house at a lake. Now, he's able to comfortably borrow the $5,000 and afford the monthly payments. But Sean is only able to afford the interest on the $10,000 for the first year. And on the subsequent years, he will have to cut his spending or increase his revenue to afford the interest and principal on the larger loan. If Sean buys the lake house, he will not be able to afford the repairs to his house. As the bank president, do you advise Sean to repair his house or approve him for the loan for the lake house? That's the word problem that I would like for you to leave. That's what we as county commissioners need to evaluate. We have income of in excess of $100 million a year. We have savings that we're not able to access. We have deferred maintenance, immediate deferred maintenance in our parks, in our facilities, mental health for the jail. Across the county, we have projects that we have on our timeline that have been part of our discussion for the capital improvement. But if we pursue a $10 million for the first year, we will only be able to afford the interest. So that's the reality. And I want us to understand, as my position, if I vote against it, it is not a vote against pickleball. <coughs> it is to maintain fiscal responsibility and make sure that we're making the right decision, not just for today, but for upcoming years. Thank you, Commissioner. You're welcome, Commissioner Cook, and I, I appreciate your thoughts, uh, and I would only say that it only takes two votes to get something passed on the county. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, there we go. So let's, let's take five and give you an opportunity to uh, head out if you'd like, and, and we'll see. Uh, how are you doing?
Well, I have a real fun to get. Yes. Just real quick, in your example, the guy in the room, one thing is left out is, and then the guy who read out, because pickleball will bring money in and help throw. Bringing lots of people in the front of the and that was Is the Tim? Tim, is the outside pretty much clear? I'd like to get started, Brad. Is it okay? Huh? All right, let's uh, if, let's get started again. Reconvene. Okay, Betty. All right. uh, yes, Betty Griner, Director of Administrative Services. Um, this is just a discussion for the capital improvement plan. Uh, I don't know exactly, you know, how you would like to proceed with this. Um, it's, what's your pleasure? Okay. Um, I'm at the point I've been studying and studying and studying the the plan, um, and I'll I'll have some proposals and some ideas coming up. What I would suggest, and we talked about discussing it uh, in the evening on Thursday, uh, along with the you know public input on the budget. I would uh, entertain a thought about finalizing it Thursday morning, because I think if we if we do a budget a public hearing and try to do CIP to you know at the same time on a Thursday evening that that things will get muddied I don't know with what do you think Commissioner Cook I just want to make sure that there's adequate public notice right um, of a final action so that if we're going to take final action on the CIP plan for Thursday making sure that the media um, that the news that we as the county have mm -hmm. adequate public notice for transparency 
for public comment. Okay. Um, I think the agenda has already gone out yeah. for Thursday as well, so this would be an amendment to the um, agenda as yeah. final action. Uh, but I understand where you're coming from is not wanting to uh, mix the issues or not wanting to create confusion as to what's being addressed. But if we do have a public discussion um, Thursday evening, this would allow, again, all members of the public to address us on both the general budget as well as the CIP, and then maybe taking final action on August the 5th, which is where we would start our budget discussions um, anyway, finalizing I, I the think, CIP. I think that's a good idea because we just passed a resolution that gave us Till the end of August. Yeah, the end of August to pass the CIP. Yes. Anyway, I think that's an excellent idea. So we'll continue to have discussions on Thursday. Um, well, now that is not on the agenda to have CIP I, discussion I'm sorry. on it, Thursday. Thursday evening. And Thursday evening. Oh, okay, yes. At 530, when we hear public input on mm -hmm. the budget, we can always uh, okay. also take input on the mm -hmm. CIP. And then for next Monday's meeting, the fifth. Yeah, the decision time is yes. that is that okay with the the other commission? Right. That, and that okay. would be uh, if you want a formal motion that a final action on the CIP would uh, take place on August the fifth at the okay. regular scheduled commission meeting. Okay. And then we would start budget discussions on Thursday the eighth, I believe it is. Yes. Yes. I think that's excellent. Okay. No. Okay. 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 Was that a motion? That is a motion. Second. A uh, motion made by Commissioner Cook, seconded by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Uh, I guess we're on the same item. Uh, Commissioner? Yes, go ahead. Last yes. week we had a, a item that we deferred um, on the during the CIP discussion regarding the Expo Center. Um, there was a request for the Expo Center as it relates to the roof at Landon um, and some facilities at the Landon Arena. Um, in addition to Agricultural Hall and to um, Heritage Hall, I believe. And we did, uh, Kellen sides with General Manager of the event, I keep saying Expo Center, but <laughs> Stormont Vale Event Center was not present, and I, I know that he's present now. If we can talk about why the roof at Landon or any parts of Landon are not included in the uh, $48 million that's already budgeted. Projects and the amounts, if you need them. Very good, thanks, Matt. Good morning, Commissioners. Kellen Site, Spectre Venue Management, and the Stormont Vale Event Center. I do apologize. I was uh, I was out on vacation last week, so back back now. So, um, yeah, just uh, just covering uh, some of the requests that we had in the uh, capital improvement five-year outlay plan. Uh, the roof for Landon and the roof for Exhibition Hall, uh, specifically, the end of life period time. Uh, does not expire for about another five years uh, on on that roof. Uh, that is why the uh, the roof was was not added into the renovation project. We still do have some time on that. Uh, some of the thought process behind that was a uh, is that uh, a piece of the project that we can fund through uh, potential capital uh, requests and capital outlay, uh, or B, uh, is it something that we can improve our financial situation to uh, start to build up a, a little bit more of a, a revenue base and, and have some contingency monies uh, year over year uh, that might be able to go to that project. So that's that's uh, directly why the uh, the, the roof uh, for Lane and Arena and Exhibition Hall was not included in the renovation project as a whole. Thank you. Uh, the, the roof for uh, Ag Hall uh, is is a uh, an area that um, is again closely encroaching upon its uh, end of life period. Uh, we we do have to do some annual repairs to the roof uh, almost almost yearly. Uh, we'll be taking uh, some of those repairs uh, on this year. Uh, we've already started some of those, uh, in fact, uh, and we'll continue to do that for for years to come. It's just we. We really wanted to try and focus our, our capital improvement requests on, on what areas of the facility are, uh, are going to be needing the most attention over the next five years. Um, I, I don't know if now is the best time to uh, introduce. We've, we've made some changes to our request for uh, 2020. Uh, I think I've spent some time talking with uh, each of you about those. Uh, but due to some 
circumstance and, and situational changes at, at the venue, uh, the initial request for, for 2020 uh, at the $400,000 mark, we don't see the opportunity as likely uh, to recoup the investment on that infrastructural projects. So we've made some amendments to the 2020 request. We've gotten it down to key areas that uh, we feel uh, we well we know rather uh, that we're going to have to address on a deferred maintenance side for next year, uh, as well as a as a small uh, addition to some enhanced security measures at the facility uh, that can or cannot be going into the project through uh, some of the FF and E monies that are set aside in the project. But again, uh, just trying to uh, best weigh the options on how we can get the the best bang for the buck uh, out of the renovation as well as. Uh, some of the capital improvement requests. So uh, happy to introduce that to you now. I'll give a copy to you. Thank you. Uh, essentially, the request has, has lowered from 400,000, uh, which was primarily aimed at uh, renovating the entire ice plant operations at the facility uh, down to to more of a, a bare bones structure of what we know we're going to be need to doing or what we know we're needing to be done uh, for next year on a deferred maintenance standpoint. Uh, so some of the items uh, that are in there are, are items that remained in there from the original request. We do have a need for um, an ice plant compressor rebuild for this next year as well as uh, repairs uh, and rebuilding of the Freon tank system that holds the glycol to chill the floor. Uh, both of those are, are not the large expense from, from our original 2020 request. Both of those are, are fairly minimal uh, in anticipated cost. Um, the one new element here that we've requested for the 2020 capital outlay uh, is full pass-through metal detection and magnetometer uh, systems. We've, we've requested about 10 uh, on here in this request uh, for, for a total of $45,000. What that system allows us to do is create a more safe uh, and secure environment for our patrons, but not only uh, creating a safer and, and more secure environment, it allows us to reduce our indirect costs uh, from, from staffing, wanding, uh, and those types of measures that this uh, system would replace. Uh, so it will allow us to reduce some of that indirect cost uh, and and create a safer environment for our patrons and employees at the same time. Okay. Happy to answer any questions if you have any. Don't see any. Thank you, Kelly. If I may ask, uh, since our policy states a date that um, projects would need to be submitted by I would ask uh, that you waive that if you want to accept this um, this amended project request. Move to waive the, um, uh, the time requirement. deadline. Yeah, submission deadline. Yeah, second that. Hmm? Motion made to waive uh, by Commissioner Cook, seconded by Commissioner Ripon. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Uh, I will point out though that that the public's going to wonder. If we're spending $48 million on the Expo Center, why we're going to need extra, extra, extra money. So that's something that really needs to be considered and brought up. So, okay. Thank you. Anything else, Betty? Commissioners? Much pleasure. Okay. Uh, again, we will discuss on uh, Thursday the CIP and public input on the budget at 530. Uh, we will not have discussion of the CIP at the meeting because it's not on the agenda anyway. So, next item please. Administrative communications. This is an opportunity for any department head or any member of the public to address the commission uh, on issues that are important. Good morning, Commissioner John Boyd, Parks and Recreation. I just wanted to give you a quick update on our East Edge uh, Road Reclamation Project. Had a meeting Friday afternoon with the contractors. We have our schedule set. We're uh, beginning construction August 5th 
which is wow. next Monday. Uh, we're sending out a press release. Uh, we are breaking this down into two phases. Phase one starts at 45th Street and goes past to the uh, permanent entrance to the golf course. We're creating a temporary entrance into the golf course so that we can get past that. Then uh, once phase one is done, then the golf operations won't be interfer interfered with after that. Um, for phase one, uh, we're going to have detour signs out and you'll only be able to get to the golf course from 37th Street. Um, phase one is scheduled to last two weeks and once that's done then we go to phase two which is just past the golf course entrance to the north to 37th Street and that is also two weeks. Questions? All right. All right thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, my name is Lynn. I'm the epidemiologist at the Shawnee County Health Department. Um, I would like to share with you. Would, would you move the microphone down? I want to make sure everybody can hear you. Sorry, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I would like to share with you um, my epi surveillance news topic for this month. Um, it is not about pickleball, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will just um, pull up my epi surveillance. For you. Okay, so for this month, um, I wrote about vector borne diseases. And so from the graph, you can see that uh, the blue line is our tick borne diseases in Shawnee County, wow. and our um, orange line is our mosquito borne diseases in Shawnee County. And so we are in our tick season, we have peaked. Um, so this graph shows all of the confirmed vector borne diseases over the last 10 years. So I, that I don't bore you too much, um, we've received over 400 vector borne diseases reports in Shawnee County over the last 10 years. Our nurses are hard at work um, investigating these cases. And of those, about 30% of them have been confirmed. Uh, of all of the vector borne diseases, about a report about all the vector borne diseases. Um, from 2014 to 2016, and um, there are nine new vector-borne pathogens reported for the first time in the United States, and um, I am proud to say that we made the list. Um, in 2014, uh, a gentleman from Bourbon County, um, we got a, a new disease from Kansas, and it's called Bourbon virus. I will say I was highly disappointed it wasn't Shawnee County, but there we go. And lastly, I would like to share this um, photograph from the CDC. It, it was originally in a Twitter form, and now it's currently on the CDC's Facebook. If you can see the muffins here, um, there are five ticks on this muffin. Wow. Can you guess which one's a tick? <laughs> <laughs> So um, obviously this was to highlight that ticks are very, very small. The idea is during the season we want to um, remind people that they should be using bug spray, they should be doing um, tick checks with their children, um, with their dogs and themselves. And um, to the left is our um, wonderful mosquito that is um, enjoying a blood meal from one of us. And so uh, that's all I would like to um, share with you. I will say that the uh, Twitter for the muffin highly upset um, some people, and the CDC responded with, I am sorry that we ticked you off. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the history guy got that. <laughs> all right, any questions for Lynn? Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning, commissioners. I don't know that I will be quite as humorous <laughs> as uh, the health agency, but um, I'm here. I'm Eve Kendall. I'm from the Department of Corrections, but today I'm here to talk to you about the county's health and wellness committee. Um, we had a... How do I turn this off? Something about a mosquito and ticks staring at me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
There Great. you go. I feel safer now. <laughs> so uh, I did have a PowerPoint for you, but um, technology at its finest, um, we can't find it. So I'm going to learn from my director to adapt and overcome, and we're going to move forward and make it happen. Um, we, uh, we try to give you a quarterly report of what's going on with the Wellness Committee. Um, to remind you, our, uh, we're committed to providing wellness information and resources to the county, our county employees because we believe that if we can improve their well-being, uh, it will increase their productivity, morale, and health care savings for both them and for the county. Um, we have a committee that is currently eight people, but we are going to grow to nine as Linda Oaks joins us next month. Um, we do have one chair. She is going to co-chair uh, with them. We have uh, people in our uh, committee that are from all different agencies, uh, the human resources, uh, the Department of Corrections, Solid Waste, Depar uh, the Sheriff's Department, Audit Finance, uh, Parks and Rec, so on and so forth. So uh, we are diverse in our uh, where we come from and uh, some of the things we think about and how we want to go about things. Uh, since we began, we have created a, uh, a vision and mission statement. We've uh, created a uh, website landing page that people can go to to receive information. If you go to the county's website, if you go down to the left-hand side, right next to your guys' pictures at the very bottom, you will see the, uh, the line for the Health and uh, Wellness Committee. If you're an intranet, it's on the right-hand side at the bottom. You'll see the uh, Health and Wellness Committee and all the different uh, places that you can go there. It's full of all kinds of information. It uh, contains some of our information from our recent events. We've had um, Rethinking Obesity uh, session. We've had Stress and Anxiety uh, session to uh, understand where we get some of our stress and how we can alleviate some of it. Uh, we've started a financial fitness sessions, um, which is a 18 session um, program. So we're thinking once a month, first Friday of every month, we're gonna do a fitness wellness um, uh, thing over lunch. Uh, with Mid-America Credit Union and Housing and Credit Counseling, Inc. Um, we've talked about uh, how to budget and uh, what to look for. This Friday coming up, we are talking about credit scores and how to better understand them. Kind of runs in line with uh, what's going on with us uh, as a county as a whole right now. Um, we're working on, well, last month we had a blood pressure awareness lunch and learn, and we're working on uh, how to get a better night's sleep for August uh, 21st. And uh, next big thing we have coming is the mobile uh, mammography uh, bus that comes in. That will be September 25th. Uh, that's a very important uh, resource for busy individuals um, to take advantage of. And uh, more information will be coming shortly um, as that time gets closer. Um, again, we have our website that people can go to to look up information and uh, to either see what we have going on or to see other things that we have access to uh, as far as the city uh, Topeka Fitness Center that we can um, take part in, uh, Blues 365 through our health insurance, uh, telemedicine to uh, help with uh, the minor injuries and illnesses that we come across uh, concerning uh, sore throats or sinus infections or or muscle and joint pain, so on and so forth, and our Live Well newsletter that we put on there every month also. Uh, that is uh, a brief rundown of what's going on with the Wellness Committee, and I will stand for any questions you might have. Questions for Eve? Questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else this morning? Anyone? <laughs> All right, Commissioner Cook. Shawnee County Fair was last week down at the Expo Center, Event Center, and uh, was very well attended. It was uh, fun had by all and uh, had the opportunity to be a pancake helper during their breakfast uh, Saturday morning, uh, which was a fundraiser for the Shawnee County 4-H. And so it was just a really good experience. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Rippon. Uh, I think you've been out of town, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, uh, I attended the National Association of Counties uh, uh, White House briefing in Washington, D.C., and we had, a, we had an excellent time. We got, uh, got to tour the White House, but uh, uh, the briefing was great. Uh, we talked about disaster recoveries for counties. Uh, we talked about national security. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers talked about flood control management. Uh, 
We heard from the Ho Department of Housing and Urban Development, uh, U.S. Department of Interior. They, we talked about trade. Uh, talked about, uh, from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, they, they talked about uh, programs they had for water and sewer uh, upgrades, grants that are available. I thought that could play into, play into our needs here. Uh, also, uh, U.S. Department of Transportation was there and uh, spoke for a while. Uh, Department of Energy, and they talked about brownfields and super funds for redevelopment of areas <laughs> like it. Uh, and then uh, they also talked about uh, the Office of National uh, Drug Policies and, uh, you know, the, the big problems. You hear about opioids all the time, but mm -hmm. they said meth is still the, the big problem yeah. in this uh, in this country and but overall it was it was it was a great uh, great conference and I learned a lot and uh, we had uh, we had an, uh, a surprise speaker at the end of it all we, uh, Vice President Pence came into the room and uh, spoke to us uh, we were commissioners from uh, Iowa Nebraska Kansas and Missouri and uh, so there was a group of probably I'd say 50 to 60 of us there and uh, but it was a good it was a good day Good. Thank you. Thank all you, right. Commissioner. I appreciate that. Uh, I've said all I want to say for the day. Uh, next item, please. Executive sessions. There's not a need for an executive session, so we're officially adjourned. Thank you for attending. I'm done with muffins. <laughs> I'm done with eating muffins. <laughs> <laughs> Vanilla one, so you can That's see. right. <laughs> I'm going to be very particular. I guess so. I would. I don't know. I mean, I, you'd think they would have taken the sign off. I don't know. I don't have anything for you.